Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Saturday, August 26th, 2023. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. King Zedekiah, the last king of Judah, was uh, sworn in loyalty toward the king of Babylon, who had uh, exiled Zedekiah's predecessor, Jehoiakim, and as well as a lot of the leading men of Judah. However, Zedekiah broke his oath of loyalty to Babylon and instead reached out to Pharaoh, king of Egypt, for help against Babylon. Uh, we've already seen that Egypt did not provide uh, Judah with the help and security that Zedekiah and the other people of Judah had hoped for. In fact, they were, as we're going to hear in our reading for today, like a broken staff that causes injury to the person who leans on it. Today, the Lord turns his attention to Egypt and prophesies the judgment that will come on that kingdom as well. In the tenth year, in the tenth month, on the twelfth day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, face Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and prophesy against him and against all of Egypt. Speak to him and say, this is what the Lord God says. Look, I am against you, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great monster lying in the middle of his Nile, who says, my Nile is my own. I made it for myself. I will put hooks in your jaws and make the fish of your streams cling to your scales. I will haul you up from the middle of your Nile, and all the fish of your streams will cling to your scales. I will leave you in the desert, you and all the fish of your streams. You will fall on the open ground and will not be taken away or gathered for burial. I have given you to the wild creatures of the earth and the birds of the sky as food. Then all the inhabitants of Egypt will know that I am the Lord, for they have been a staff made of reeds to the house of Israel. When Israel grasped you by the hand, you splintered, tearing all their shoulders. When they leaned on you, you shattered and made all their hips unsteady. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. I am going to bring a sword against you and cut off both people and animals from you. The land of Egypt will be a desolate ruin. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Because you said, the Nile is my own, I made it. Therefore, I am against you and your Nile. I will turn the land of Egypt into ruins, a desolate waste from Migdal and Syene, as far as the border of Cush. No human foot will pass through it, and no animal foot will pass through it. It will be uninhabited for 40 years. I will make the land of Egypt desolation among desolate lands, and its cities will be a desolation among ruined cities for 40 years. I will disperse the Egyptians among the nations and scatter them throughout the lands. For this is what the Lord God says. At the end of 40 years, I will gather the Egyptians from the peoples where they were dispersed, I will restore the fortunes of Egypt and bring them back to the land of Pathros, the land of their origin. There they will be a lowly kingdom. Egypt will be the lowliest of kingdoms and will never again exalt itself over the nations. I will make them so small they cannot rule over the nations. It will never again be an object of trust for the house of Israel, drawing attention to their iniquity of turning to the Egyptians then they will know that I am the Lord God. In the 27th year, in the first month, on the first day of the month, the word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon made his army labor strenuously against Tyre. Every head was made bald and every shoulder chafed. But he and his army received no compensation from Tyre for the labor he expended against it. Therefore, this is what the Lord God says. I am going to give the land of Egypt to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, and he will carry off its wealth, seizing its spoil and taking its plunder. 
This will be his army's compensation. I have given him the land of Egypt as the pay he labored for, since they worked for me. This is the declaration of the Lord God. In that day, I will cause a horn to sprout for the house of Israel, and I will enable you to speak out among them. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Our psalm today is another psalm of Asaph. We're going to read the first part of Psalm 78. In this psalm, Asaph reviews Israel's history and draws lessons from that history. Psalm 78, a masculine of Asaph. My people hear my instruction. Listen to the words from my mouth. I will declare wise sayings. I will speak mysteries from the past, things we have heard and known, and that our ancestors have passed down to us. We will not hide them from their children, but will tell a future generation the praiseworthy acts of the Lord, his might, and the wondrous works he has performed. He established a testimony in Jacob and set up a law in Israel, which he commanded our ancestors to teach to their children so that a future generation, children yet to be born, might know. They were to rise and tell their children so that they might put their confidence in God and not forget God's works, but keep his commands. Then they would not be like their ancestors, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not loyal and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The Ephraimite archers turned back on the day of battle. They did not keep God's covenant and refused to live by his law. They forgot what he had done, the wondrous works he had shown them. He worked wonders in the sight of their ancestors, in the land of Egypt, the territory of Zoan. He split the sea and brought them across. The water stood firm like a wall. He led them with a cloud by day and with a fiery light throughout the night. He split rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as abundant as the depths. He brought streams out of the stone and made water flow down like rivers. But they continued to sin against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They deliberately tested God, demanding the food they craved. They spoke against God, saying, Is God able to provide food in the wilderness? Look, he struck the rock and water gushed out torrents overflowed. But can he also provide bread or furnish meat for his people? Therefore the Lord heard and became furious. Then fire broke out against Jacob and anger flared up against Israel, because they did not believe God or rely on his salvation. He gave a command to the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained manna for them to eat. He gave them grain from heaven. People ate the bread of angels. He sent them an abundant supply of food. He made the east wind blow in the skies and drove the south wind by his might. He rained meat on them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the seas. He made them fall in the camp all around the tents. The people ate and were completely satisfied, for he gave them what they craved. Before they had turned from what they had craved, while the food was still in their mouths, God's anger flared up against them, and he killed some of their best men. He struck down Israel's fit young men. Despite all this, they kept sinning, and he did not believe his wonders and did not believe his wondrous works. He made their days end in futility, their years in sudden disaster. When he killed some of them, the rest began to seek him. They repented and searched for God. They remembered that God was their rock, the most high God, their redeemer. But they deceived him with their mouths. They lied to him with their tongues. Their hearts were insincere toward him, and they were unfaithful to his covenant. Yet he was compassionate. He atoned for their iniquity and did not destroy them. He often turned his anger aside and did not unleash all his wrath. He remembered that they were only flesh, a wind that passes and does not return. Now, 
And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.